Welcome back to Dan's Disc Golf and good morning. I forgot what channel this was for a second, I guess, because I'm tired. 7.45, an hour and a half before first round. Making some coffee. I haven't drank coffee these last couple days, so this should definitely help. Excited and nervous for the tournament. Two rounds today. First one's at Waterworks. That's what this video is going to be. Then tomorrow will be the second round at Labanit. I'll also post the third round more than likely tomorrow. We'll see, because I am tired and I need to find a way to sleep a little bit more. <laughs> really just want to make sure that I can keep myself in the tournament over these first two rounds and try to win it over the last couple. We'll see what ends up happening. Gonna have low expectations, play my game, not even checking scores. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a four-round tournament, so there's nothing I can do these rounds that'll like keep me pushing, except for play my game, because my game plan is to birdie every single hole. So we're playing aggressive. Hopefully the putt's on. Gonna warm it up and get ready to roll. See you on hole one. All right, hole number one for me is actually hole number 17. It's a 613 foot par four. This is at Waterworks Disc Golf Course, the first of the four courses. And if you've ever been to Kansas City and played disc golf there, you've probably heard of Waterworks. It's the home of the Casey Wide Open for a while. I'm just starting out throwing my zone, trying to get it a little bit down the hill, leave it a little low and push it into the hill, which unfortunately kind of gets me a little bit pinched off for the birdie. So I decided to throw my fire bird and have a little bit of a slip there. Threw it on some Anheuser. The basket is on top of the hill that I just landed into. And so we're gonna need to, again, pitch up and get up and down for the par. Basically after that drive, I was conceding par at best. I'm pitching up my zone at this point on a hyzer. Going uphill, it's relatively simple. You just push a hyzer up there and let it sit behind the basket. And we're starting off even. Once again, you're gonna see that we have neutral putting down there, meaning I have not missed a circle one putt or made a circle two putt. That's how we either add or lose strokes. Hole number 18 here is a weird hole. It's a very hard birdie. I'm kind of hyzer flipping up a neutral to understable destroyer, which is my Jessica Weiss Echo Star one, leaving me with this look for birdie, which is a way better look than I had in practice at all. This is one that I'm sure is pretty hard to birdie. And at that putt, I was really trying to focus on either making it or hitting nothing. <laughs> that high five right there. Is because Brock just aced hole one. This is hole number one at Waterworks. Beautiful 290 foot downhill hole. Because he aced it, I was like, man, maybe I'm going to juice this zone. So I decided to lay off it a little bit and end up putting it into the front side of the hill, leaving me 45 foot short. Just picking out the ace with his flat top firebird. This was supposed to be a run, but my body's probably like, hey, buddy, don't run that putt. Go ahead and drop in your easy par. But we started par, 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 which is a little bit boring. And so I'm hoping to be able to get this next hole. Pretty sure this is like 370 ish feet uphill. Caddy book says 315, but I think it's farther. And I'm very confused about that shot, as you'll hear here. So Brock threw a disc and it flipped and rode. I think it's actually a right to left wind, not a headwind like we said, which means that it's going to actually push the hyzer far to the left. Whereas if it gets over on any, any angle, it's gonna keep it over. So I end up having to pitch up out of those bushes. Not a great pitch up with my zone. Things are gliding a little bit, also awkward angle. It leaves me with this about 25, 30 foot putt. Able to knock it down, which is a really good par save in my opinion. Next hole is a mando to the right. So I'm throwing my envy on a slight kind of tight flex line. Yeah. You need to keep it on top of the shelf. Yeah, that should be great. But I just kind of sneak down to the bottom where I have an uphill putt from about 25 feet, maybe a little bit closer than that, but really just got to aim for a high chain and commit. And we're finally able to get on the board on hole three, which is our fifth hole. One down, I know that I'm really, to shoot well this course, I'm probably wanting to shoot anywhere from like five to nine is the number. Not really trying to put a number in my head, just trying to go hole by hole. And I just early released that Firebird. I've noticed a problem with some of my forehands recently, you probably saw there, where I kind of am throwing it out a little bit more at my side instead of it in front of me. And this leaves me with kind of awkward up and down through the middle there. And this is kind of going to be a theme a little bit of the weekend is juicing my upshots. A lot of that I think is because I was struggling with upshots in Denver and then I finally felt like I got them dialed. But here, everything kind of glides a little bit more. And so I think it's pushing me a little bit farther. Luckily, we're able to convert for the par save and stay at neutral putting. The putter is definitely feeling good today. Don't know if it's the flippy jersey or what. Not sponsored by them in this video, but they did sponsor yesterday's video if you haven't checked it out. It's actually, I had to change my bag up a little bit. So maybe check that out after this one. Hole number five is a 330 to 370 foot. Not exactly sure because I feel like the T signs lie on a lot of these or like the caddy book does. That was kind of my neutral overstable destroyer. It's my Ricky two time. And that disc and I, that 
it's the one I threw on like hole number two. We're just not getting along super well and it leaves me with this step putt, which you're gonna actually notice is a new type of step putt for me. This is something that I kind of worked on the day before the tournament and really felt like I was getting a little bit more accuracy and closer misses if I was kind of juicing the basket because everything just kind of stayed in line instead of trying to hyzer it in. I felt like everything was kind of on line the whole way. Leading us into hole number six, which is a really pretty kind of classic shot here, 290 feet just dead ahead. I'm throwing my strike, kind of one of my older ones, which is now a nice, beautiful hyzer flippy guy, but I end up early releasing it. And I was noticing towards the end of my practice that I kept early releasing it. I do think I'm gonna throw it again this round, uh, but I will kind of mention that I don't really figure this out until the next round, but I think it's because there was a lot of dirt on that disc. So once I wiped it off with a towel, I was able to really comfortably throw that thing again. So that might be an issue if you're early releasing some discs, maybe wipe off all the dirt that's on the inside. So I step up to my lie here and really need to look to see if it's kind of a backhand or a forehand. I have a couple gaps, but this forehand's a little more open. So I take my Origin, which is a, what is that? The Kyle Klein Tour Series, I kind of forget what it's called, and just throw a really touchy forehand with it, kind of like ultimate style, ends up being really good. So now we're through, I think probably right around nine holes and I am like one down, really not feeling good about the round and knowing that I need to get something going on the back nine. My body is tired, I'm tired, and I'm really thinking I need to make sure that I commit to the shot. So I take my time and throw my color glow strike just up this right side gap. Really beautiful shot which gets the slide right up to the basket and hits the pin. Shout out to RJ and Brock who I played with this round. Great card mates, and it's really nice to be able to finally have a little drop in. Well, number eight is 237 feet downhill. In practice, I was really liking throwing this pure, this gold line one just on a low line, and it just, I don't know, sticks to my fingers or something because that thing blew. I really wanted to keep it like three feet off the ground, throwing it straight at the basket inside of the tree that's just to the right of it, but it goes way out of bounds deep. This is another one where I kind of want to run it, but if I miss, I don't want it to hit any part of the metal and not go in. Uh, so we take a bogey, unfortunately. First bogey of the round. Really wanted to keep a bogey free round, if not tournament, but we can have a bounce back. 375 foot hole straight ahead. I actually practiced from the wrong tee pad. This is my first look at this one. And I'm gonna again throw my neutral stable destroyer, which is that Ricky two time. Gets a little bit of flip up, but this is really the issue with throwing these discs with only having two days down at sea level because throwing hyzer flips, you really need to know the flip points where something will flip to flat and something will turn over. As you can see there, my miss was a little bit better with that step putt than I've just been airballing all of my straddle steppers. So really not too mad about it. It feels like it's getting a little dialed and hopefully we can drop a couple of those step putts throughout the rest of this round. Hole number 10 for me is 200, and, it's not 260 feet, is it? I feel like it's 300 feet uphill, plays closer to about 400 because of how uphill it is. I really feel like this caddy book is lying to me. I'm like looking at it and I just like, am baffled by some of the distances that it says. I'm throwing my neutral flippy destroyer, which is my Echo Star, the Jessica Weiss, which is just a bomber in Denver, a bomber here too. But once again, you have to worry about flip points. But when you're going uphill and you need something to continue moving right, throwing something a little bit flippier can be pretty decent. I throw a really good line, just a little bit low, which leaves me again with another step putt. Really trying to feel confident about it. I haven't really worked on these going uphills at all, and that definitely kind of truncates the step. You need to push off that back leg, kind of bring it a little bit inside closer to you. And it kind of like kind of like an Adam Hammy's putt, honestly. Ends up just throwing it a little bit low and right. Really just didn't commit. I don't know why I was afraid of that putt, probably because of the rollaway potential, but we're able to tap in maybe about 15 feet to take a par. Hole number 11 is 270 to 300 feet. Very uphill again though, and I'm again gonna be throwing that strike. Kind of the original one, the first one that I've ever owned, and I just put it into the hill. Really disappointed about that shot, honestly. I wanted to give it the height. I felt like this was one that I could definitely get, but it leaves a circle to look. And finally, I decided to commit to a putt. Really stoked to get one of those circle twos, and that brings us to plus one putting on the weekend, meaning that I've made more circle two putts, one more circle two putt, than I have missed circle one. Hole number 12 is a 280 foot par three, maybe slightly farther than that and very low ceiling. I'm gonna be throwing my flat top Firebird, which even if you watch some of those warm up forehands, they were not good looking forehands. They were a little bit wobbly. And when you have a little off axis torque, it's gonna stable stuff out way faster. I think too, my body was starting to get really tired. And so even though I was pushing a flat top Firebird really well there in practice, was not necessarily the best decision in the round. I probably should have listened to my body. I ran that putt because I felt like I had some good momentum, but it just got a really big roll away. But we haven't missed a circle one putt yet. Should be relatively simple. Clean up from 30 feet. 
and I do a good job relatively committing to it, I don't think I just aimed high enough because the commitment out of my hand was good. The pace was good. It just was not high enough. And we take a bogey, arguably because of some bad decision making, trying to stay aggressive. Because if I make that first putt for the birdie, I feel like I have really good momentum going into the back kind of six or seven holes. Hole number 13 is a 330 foot hole, kind of straight ahead, but you have to cover this kind of chasm between there. There is a Mando and I smack a tree and get super lucky to just continue moving up forward on the fairway. I threw third on the card and actually ended up with the luckiest kick because we all hit something. So thank you tree for that. Leaves me with this putt, which is another one of those, either make the putt or miss all the metal. And we miss all the metal with a really easy tap in here to take another par. Hole number 14 is a 454 foot hole par three. Massive shot downhill. We do have a left to right wind. And I don't like, like I said, throwing those hyzer flips right now because I don't know how far right it's going to go. So I decided to throw an Anheuser, just try to get a massive smash there because I actually parked it in practice with this disc. It's my SDS Destroyer, taking my hat off because I knew I threw it way too nose up and we're going down the hill, which is really not going to leave us with a good look. I do have a look in with my zone. I'm not super far off from being pin high, but... I have a decent ways to cover and there's some OB a little bit deep. I wanted to keep it a little bit inside of the basket and I thought that I threw a perfect shot. I was just kind of a really simple tap in, but I actually stepped up to my lie and I had gone over those stairs which are OB. I did not realize how close it was to the basket. Kind of one of the bad things about not playing these courses very much. And that brings us back to even. Two bogeys there, three bogeys for the round kind of really not able to score on this course so far and it's not been because of the putting because we are back to neutral putting so hole number 15 really have two holes left want to get them both for the birdie and i throw my firebird just a little too flat i wanted to put that on a little bit of hyzer really happy to have hit the gap and get close to the basket but i really wanted to park one as you can tell i'm a little bit disappointed i'm a little disappointed with that shot but it does leave us with another inside the circle putt And even though we had an awkward lie, I was able to commit to the putt, really feeling powerful, really feeling powerful from this inline stance and really happy to go into the last hole, at least one down. Like you cannot shoot even at this course and feel any good about yourself, even though no matter what, even acing this hole, I'm not gonna feel great about my round. Let's try to get two down on the last hole, hole 16. Really quickly, wanna give a big shout out to Sebastian and Jessica for being my caddy and camera person today. Just could not have done it without you and for all four rounds. So massive help. I just cannot believe that you guys are willing to be able to do that with me. I really appreciated having you guys there. Hole number 16 is a 281 foot par three with a very strong left to right wind. And I was kind of debating whether or not there was a headwind out there. And that would make me change between my putter and my pathfinders. I decided to go with the Envy because I had been flipping up the pathfinder a little too much. And I hadn't really done that with the Envy when I threw it on a decent bit of hyzer. And I guess that's the same thing with throwing the pathfinder on a lot of hyzer. But I really wanted to make sure that I could just do something in case I had that tournament power and get it to the basket. Unfortunately, we did wind up a little bit short. And so I'm trying to kind of mine that step putt and have one last one just finally hit and go back to positive putting oh my god start to walk it in super confident about it i really hope you guys saw how close that was to just wanting to spit back out it just kind of held up there and barely dropped in that scared the crap out of me really stoked to end with two birdies but i do have some final thoughts that i think are pretty important to share with you guys from this round before we get into the second round which will be live tomorrow well i kind of hate that this has happened so much but i shot again like what feels like just such a bad round i'm positive putting made two circle one putts or made two circle two putts and missed one circle one putt, which is that uphill one. I just like three bogeys. It's way too many bogeys at a course like this. Definitely most of it is just my throwing, which is good because my putting is on and my throwing was on in Denver. Now it's just like, I need to figure out how to throw it as straight. I think I'm so tired still because I wasn't able to get that much sleep last night, like six hours and I didn't get enough sleep the previous two nights and I had thrown so much that like, I need to listen to my body and like disc up a little bit or just like, focus on committing to the shot because when i go through the motions normally i have enough energy that's just like okay this is fine but now when i go through the motions it's like way too slow so i need to focus up on committing for the next round right now it looks like my round is going to be rated anywhere from like 952 to like 957 it's like fluctuated a little bit which again not bad for like a bad round for me but i'm seven off the lead so i definitely need to make sure that like i pick it up there's three more rounds which is nice because i mean if i can claw back a couple strokes every round we're looking good I would love to try to still get first or second, but now my like main thing I'm focusing on is just getting back into the cash and making as much money as I can, so getting as high as I can in the cash. Because right now I'm one stroke off 
Elite. The next course is La Benit, which not my favorite course. Really want to score on the front holes. The back nine is kind of weird. You can still score on it, but not trying to give myself a number, just trying to shoot hot and not sure what that's going to look like, but I'm enjoying being here and playing tournaments. Got to give myself a little bit of grace in this one because I know like I've only been here two days. I still some stuff is still just not doing what I think it's doing. Um, that's just gonna take time, learning my discs, and I'm gonna have that after this weekend. But as of right now, I gotta go drive to the next course, eat some lunch in the van, and uh, if you wanna check out like the little bit of my bag changes that you might've seen throughout this video, check that out right down there, like my plan for the tournament. Otherwise, subscribe, because tomorrow will come out two rounds, more than likely, maybe just one, but I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna do that. Um, and you guys will see both those next rounds. That's it, okay, love you, bye.